hit it to win it. Usually I work on some pretty junk stuff, but today I will be swapping the shifters out from um, my gravel bike and actually putting them on my road bike. I'm just gonna do a little switcheroo and uh, figured I'd take you along with me. Here we go. It looks really nice, but it's really built up off of just spare parts. So for example, like the cranks don't really fit. Um, everything is just a little bit off about it. The one thing I don't really like are these really bulbous, not great looking shifters. So it's um, 11 speed in the rear. So 11 speed shifters, hydraulic disc brakes on this. Um, so they're, they're nice, but now that I have these on my gravel bike, I've freed up these. So I'm gonna spiff these up today uh, and put them on that. So let's do it. Not quite sure what I'm gonna do with the bars. Um, I know that I'm not gonna be doing this anymore. I'll get a proper mount for my Garmin. But um, I'm still not sure because I've got these like a little bit of 42 centimeter wide bars, um, which are nice. They're Cannondale branded, um, all aluminum. They go with the sort of poor man's like bike, even though I get it, this is a sick bike. Um, but I also got these hologram bars, which are, you know, like aero integrated um, deals, um, which I did a little bartering for. I traded my friend uh, Steve some stuff for him and these are 40s, so I'm a mountain biker, I have a mountain bike background and that's a little bit narrow for me. 42 is still narrow. My gravel bike, um, well, I went, I haven't actually ridden these yet. That's 52 now. So I don't know. I'm trying to decide if I should keep these bars or go with those bars. Guess we'll just tear it down and see. So I've got the old bar tape pulled off. Uh, I say old bar tape loosely because I'm a huge fan of reusing everything that I possibly can. And I know that there's, most people are in the camp of just replace your bar tape, bro. Um, but this stuff from fabric is actually pretty good because it's just basically like a silicon bar tape. Um, and it doesn't have this, it doesn't have adhesive on the back of it. So basically it relies on the tension that you use to wrap it, um, which I find to be pretty nice. Um, so anyways, you can reuse it, but I'm telling you guys, I reuse old bar tape all the time. I mean, this stuff has been with me through thick and thin and um, I just replaced these levers last night and I just put that stuff back on and I've had that for two seasons. So anyways, next up here is, um, should be relatively easy dealing thing I got to deal with is the internally routed um, cables, basically, and the only one that's really going to pose a problem. Oh, I stand corrected. On this frame, it is, in fact, external. So it goes, yeah, no, it a little bit. So it popped back in. Okay. So I'm going to have to deal with the routing that goes... Um, over or under the bottom bracket spindle. I'm gonna have to look that up because I can't remember. One way is right and one way is wrong because um, if you do it wrong, it will bind on the spindle here. Um, so I'll probably look it up, figure out the right way to do it and then do it wrong anyways. And then it's just internally routed through here. So uh, all I gotta do is pop this off and then let it go. Um, it's really not that big of a deal. Um, this is gonna be relatively easy. I might have to pull the beat, uh, the crank 
so I can see what I'm doing in there, but um, it shouldn't be too big of a deal. So I'm just going to do it. And then still working on whether or not I'm gonna run these bars or these bars. I'm struggling to find a compelling reason to switch to these. I don't know. We'll see. I'm still on the fence. Um, it would make cable routing cleaner because the break and shift cable on both sides would go into these holes and then they would pop out the bottom. So um, I suppose in a sense, that's a little bit cleaner, but you know, I don't mind this type of thing at all. Um, this bike's got it. Like that's no big deal. That routing fairly clean. Even old bikes have it. I mean, obviously it's been like that forever. This one. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I get it. The only th reason why I wouldn't do it is because these bars are again, narrower than those bars. So that's my only hesitation. Otherwise I would send it in a heartbeat. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> using just like I said used parts that were off of other bills and other people I'm probably the third person to own these I wanted to make sure that these in fact matched those before I went crazy and so one of the things I was looking at was how many speeds um, so this right hand lever um, needs to have 11 to match that and so in fact, it does, uh, and I counted because it came off of that, so I just made sure by counting that one. One of the things I really was half sweating, but not really, was uh, this left lever because it is um, a two-speed, so basically two by 11 drivetrain here, but I've never run it with gears on that front. I've always run, always, always, always run it as one by with just an extra little dangle paddle for no reason. Um, and like I said, I never bought like specific parts for any of these bikes, which is why it's all just um, sort of cobbled. But anyways, this is in fact two by, this is in fact um, 11 speeds. So I can go ahead and continue. Um, I'm gonna try to, well, I am going to, in case you don't know, I'm sure most of you do, but just pulling the hood back here to gain access to um, the shift left, the shift cable here, which just kind of loops through the, the body here. Um, and then this is the fitting for <clears throat> the hydraulic hose, which is like preferably use a seven mil box wrench on that, but I can't find that. So I'm gonna use my trusty hammer, which I've had longer than any other tool. It's beautiful, I love it. Um, and it's old, so it's better than the new ones. It's relatively precise, and um, I'm not super comfortable messing with this stuff on it, but you know, none of this is new stuff, so it's not really gonna hurt it. So anyways, I'm gonna pull this off, try to lose the least amount of fu uh, fluid as possible, um, but I'm not sweating if I do. I just don't wanna get it all over my floor. Um, and so, yeah. Let's get on with it. Uh, I'm gonna say no, I think, and here's why. Okay, they're narrower, which I'm not down with, but I would also have to, uh, I don't think the holes are big enough to accept this nut, so I would have to cut them a little bit shorter and then install a new olive and barb in there, um, which, is no big deal, but I don't think I have any. Let me just take a look-see. I don't know about all that. I don't think I'm gonna do it. I think I'm just gonna leave these bars. Let's do it. I know I just said I wasn't gonna do it, but I did happen across a stash of olives and barbs here, which um, I'm pretty sure they match 
the exact Shimano ones that are supposed to go on here. I did it for, oh shoot, what did I do it for? I guess I must have done it for the gravel bike and had just extras on hand, so might as well do it. I, I don't know. Okay, let's see. All right, I am back at it. A day has gone by for me. Hopefully no time has gone by for you. Really what I want to do is before I get into any of like disconnecting the actual cables, um, so, so far my brakes still work. Um, I just want to make sure that I've got it all squared away in my own noggin, how this internal routing is gonna go and if I can reuse these cables or not. And um, the, let's see, the. Shift cables are really no big deal, um, except it's kind of a pain if you have to buy new cables. But anyways, so I'm just gonna mock it up, um, maintaining the connection on this old one, just to see if it's something that I wanna go forward with. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I'll be quick here. I got the old bars off, new ones on. And um, like I said earlier, I like to save on some stuff as much as I possibly can. And for me, that usually includes um, like these, like old cables and stuff. I'm just kind of ridiculous like that. I mean, cables are, as long as the ends aren't frayed and you can put them back and they're sliding pretty well, they don't have any big kinks in them or anything. Um, you know, just reuse them and uh, save on them a little bit. I forgot that this one has sort of a removable, um, it's got a removable little hood on it and uh, it has these tiny, 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 tiny little screws and uh, I dropped all four on my shop floor, which is covered in garbage. Um, but what you want to do is you're just going to want to stop what you're doing and watch them fall. And uh, don't try to go after them. Just keep track of them. Wait till they settle. And then never take your eyes off of them and then you'll find them even if they're tiny. But anyways, got all this on. Um, mocked it up. Um, so I'm just going to keep going. Got the new um, levers on here. Also, definitely not final assembly of bar and stem. For that, I think um, that's carbon. It's a carbon steer with an aluminum. So I'll just rummage through my garbage here and find some um, stuff like this, but it's, you know, do what you need to do. Um, so my next step is, since I'm using these, I have to route them internally. Um, through here and I know that there's no internal track so I'm gonna have to kind of um, just fish it a little bit. I've got to cut the ends off of this because uh, I'm going to have to remove um, this nut in order to get them through um, and then like I said I'll just replace them with my banjo bowl, a new banjo and a new bar. I noticed that the ends of this bar kind of end up they end up roughing up the cable a little bit if you're not careful. Um, they kind of scrape scrape it off. And uh, it's a nice, clean, you know, felt road bike, so I don't want to be doing that. Um, so I'm just gonna take my time and worm them through there. Um, it's gotta be messy. There's gonna be brake fluid all over the floor. Uh, that actually, you know what? Because I'm gonna have open brake fluid, um, I'm going to remove my pads and put them as far away as humanly possible. Um, likewise with my rotor, because you do not want to get, yeah, that's my garbage. You do not want to get um, the brake fluid anywhere near the pads of the rotors, because I've spent just way too much time having contaminated stuff. It's usually the cause of squeaks and things like that, but y'all know that. Um, so anyways, I'm gonna keep going. All right, so I'm not trying to be fancy, but let me just show you something here. So I um, cut the 
hydraulic cable, the hydraulic hose. Um, it was still live, active, and um, sorry, I don't know where the rest of my exacto knife is, but I just used that. Um, you're gonna wanna cut it cleanly, and um, Shimano's nice enough to give you some blocks to do it, which I just went ahead and didn't use. Not a fancy uh, bike kind of guy, but happen to have a fancy bike, so. Um, one of the things that falls into fancy bike categories is internal routing, and um, if you're gonna work on internal routing bikes, like, at all, just this kit from Park Duel, it's pretty much a lifesaver. I mean, it's, it's not that much money. Um, I don't know. Do it two or three times and it'll, uh, I think it'll pay for itself in terms of your time and sanity. But anyways, it's got this one specific end that kind of threads in um, to the end of this hydraulic hose here. And I've actually had minimal spillage, which is nice. I've tried to keep the top um, obviously higher than the rest of the calipers. So I'm just going to pull this through now um, and then reinstall an olive and a barb on it and then plug it back in. Uh, I'll pull this, this nut off too. So you'll see me do that, but it'll be hyper speed. Do it. to a snag and I um, didn't realize that these bolts are different from the older generation or, or something. For some reason, the Shimano sized bolts that I need are different. So um, this one won't fit into this hole. Um, and so now I can't swap to these levers and I'm gonna have to just um, hop online and order some of those. So. I'm gonna wait for those to come in and then uh, I can resume. Okay, so it is like a week later maybe, I would say. I had to order those banjo bolts to attach these new Ultegra levers, but um, I got them ordered and installed and um, I'm not gonna walk everyone through it on here because I'm a hack and folks know how to do it better, specifically that guy on um, Park tools is pretty good, but getting it routed through here, it just goes from here to here internally. Um, but that took a little bit of time too. So everything is all installed. Basically, I also got a new computer mount um, from Candel that goes with this bar and stem combo um, for a nice clean look. And I just bled out my front brake, so that is now good to go. I just have to install my um, calipers and throw the wheel back on and make sure like 10,000%, the only thing you do, don't even look, don't even look at your brake pads or anything until everything is completely rubbed down with rubbing alcohol. If any uh, brake fluid touches your pads or anything, I mean, you're basically you're gonna have contaminated brake pads and you're shit out of luck. Yep, now I'm just going to work on bleeding out the rear. Um, I've only got one caliper spacer bleed thingy. So I'm gonna bring that over, put that in the back. So let me just tell you that this isn't rocket science here. I mean, the name of the game is literally remove bubbles, which will tell you a lot about it. So. That said, um, there's a few things you need to know. Basically, you're trying to get bubbles. There's a line, so you just picture a straw. It's just a little clear straw, like you would have in your little sippy cup, all the way from the rear caliper to the brake lever here. And um, you just basically wanna blow bubbles through the straw, out through the top, so that the entire straw is completely filled with liquid and no bubbles are in the entire straw at all. So the way I do it, um, and you know, I'm not a 
I'm not an expert at all by any means, um, but I just try to demystify it and keep it simple. So this is just a normal syringe, if there is such a thing, um, that I got on Amazon for like whatever, it wasn't much. Um, and then the fitting fits into the end of your brake caliper here. There's plenty of resources online to that will go into detail about um, you know, where your brake caliper fitting is, what kinds they are, like Shimano uses a seven mil um, little bolt here. So you just take a seven mil box wrench and loosen that. Um, you know, I'm keeping it simple. I've put a little zip tie on here. So I lock it down to the bolt with a zip tie. You pre um, get the bubbles out of this. So just pre blow your bubbles out of your syringe before you attach it. Otherwise you're just gonna be pushing air, more air through the system than is already there. This little guy at the top, something that Shimano makes you do. It's basically just a reservoir so that when when the system is open, um, it's really not open, it's actually still under liquid. I've opened this. This is just a little stop so that when you take the cup out, the water doesn't pour everywhere. I've opened that stop so now the system's open from the top, meaning my straw is open on the top. And all I've got to do is go down to my little bolt down there and loosen it and then plunge all this liquid through the straw up through the top and I'm gonna watch a bunch of little bubbles come out of the system right there. Um, and when the bubbles stop, I know it's time to seal off the bottom of the system. Another important thing to note, um, I forget if I said it, but the bottom of the straw always has to be lower than the top of the straw. I'll try and show you as I push down in here, um, the bubbles that come out of here. So I'm pushing down now and all those little bubbles are coming out. So I'll just go until they stop. You don't want to run out of fluid in here because then you're just going to be pushing more air in your syringe, I mean. Okay, I'm going to stop there because I'm almost at the top and I'll just be overflowing. So I will I don't have a seven mil wrench, so I just use this ridiculous I'm telling you guys you can get away with uh not having everything, but you know some things are nice, okay, so I've um plugged the caliper now I'm removing the hose here. If you put it up like this, the vacuum from the syringe more or less keeps that in check. Um, so now my brake caliper is sitting here. I only undid it from the frame because, like I said, I don't have a seven mil. So I'm using this amazing, oh, this is my favorite tool. Yeah, pretty precision, it's actually not bad. Um, and I was pretty good for this, but I didn't get in the tiny spot that I needed it to, so. That's what I'm using. And um, now what I need to do is depress this. So it should be, I should have pretty good lever feel now. Um, I'll pump it until I do. So right now it's just getting some fluid out of the top. Air rather. So this feels pretty good. So now I'm gonna hold it here and then go um, crack that line again and get more air out of the bottom. So let me do that. I need my hand. Okay, so you saw me finish up the rear brake and it is working really well now. Um, so, feels good. I can't pull the front. The, the rear one has a brake block in it so I can pull and the calipers have something to push against so I can feel it. But since I don't have that block I told you about or pads or the rotor in here, I'm not gonna pull on that and show you how that feels because it'll just push the ceramic pistons right out of the bike. But uh, that's the brakes done and dusted. Um, all I've got to do is reinstall the pads front and rear. I want to make sure everything's super clean because I'm kind of rushing my way through this and my hands are a little bit dirty. Now I'm gonna wear some gloves and 
try not to breathe on those pads. Like I said, I just get so fed up because they get uh, so contaminated so quick. So I'm buttoning this whole thing back up. I just got the cables routed um, through the frame. This one, it was, um, there was a little guide in there. So it was super easy. I just kind of, um, I popped the derailleur off because this hanger actually has the routing in it and it just kind of got hung up right there. So I just popped it off and then routed that through there. Like I said in the beginning, um, I might have to take the crank off, but I didn't. I just, it was already in there with that. It's a little cloth sleeve. It's kind of interesting. In any case, um, it's pre-routed and it goes up and over the BB. So under the bottom bracket is wrong. The spindle inside there. You want the you want the cable to come down, go in through the bottom, and then up over it, and then out the chainstay. This front derailleur is actually super hard to to get routed around correctly. Um, it's really weird, and like I've been just spending a long time just adjusting it back and forth to try to get it right. But I just wanted to tell you guys that if there's any tools, you know, out of any of this sort of stuff that you, I would say you for sure need if you're going to work on anything really like, you know, if you're going to be changing cables or, or doing any of that, it's, it's these park tool cable cutters or just any good cable cutters. They give you perfectly cut little ends that you can thread through all the little places that you've got to thread them. So if there's one tool that I suggest you splurge on, and by splurge, I mean maybe 25 bucks, I'm not really sure. Um, it's a good set of cable cutters. So I'm gonna keep going. So that's the front. I use the cute little orange guy, you know, cute little orange one back here too. Some people go crazy with putting these in specific places, but my philosophy is kind of just let it be where it lay. Like in this one, it's, you know, just boop. So anyways, gears all work, everything shifts. Um, I ran through sort of off camera here, brakes break. Um, be sure when you, well, if you have new brake pads, don't um, bring the wheel to, don't like do any skids because you want to kind of have it um, breaking in a little bit. So you just want it to be rolling while there's pressure on it, um, just for the first couple of times while those brakes are bedding themselves in. And so last ticket is to get these bars wrapped. And then I've got a ride tomorrow, group ride tomorrow. So hopefully I can make its debut this season. Right side's done. I don't know why, I always start with the right side. It's pretty good. I don't wrap a lot of bars, like I just, I, I usually work on garbage. But, um, so I haven't wrapped these like wide bars with um, the internal, with the cables that are just kind of sticking out right there a little bit. So I had a bit of a, I don't know, I'm just being pedantic. Now I'm just gonna do the other side. concludes the program um levers are all on and bled cables are all routed shifting is working good um brakes work well everything is pretty tight i'm just gonna go do a spanner check um torque these down maybe i'll take a, st a spacer out of there because um that's looking a little tall for me um the left hand side came out a little bit a little bit nicer you saw me get super meticulous here with like using a speed square, a paint marker, and something genuinely surprising happened. You may have noticed that I didn't end up reusing um, my old tape that was over there. I will reuse that for a different project. 
Um, but I got this, you know, like, 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 what is this, you know? Who knows? No one knows. Off of Amazon or something. And holy shit. Just nice rubberized grip tape, but it's still, it's still cork and it still has that sticky strip, which is something that that reusable stuff lacked. Um, and it was just a dream to work with. And here's the really crazy part. These little pieces of, um, you know, like if you ever do bar tape in the pack, they'll give you this little thing that goes around right here um, to sort of hide your mistakes. I don't usually use those, but they also give you a little piece of electrical tape, basically just use their electrical tape um, with like logos on them. And it always makes it look cheesy in my opinion. Um, but Anyways, I used it to finish off the ends here and you know, I am pleasantly surprised with how that came out for like, that tape was probably 12 bucks. Not, not even kidding you. I highly recommend it. Boom. Here it is. I did end up switching the cranks to correct hologram cranks and it is looking really good yeah those really finished the bike off there's still some love scratches on it from its previous life but it's a much better package now than it was I just love the way everything came out. Nice. Hit it to win it.